afternoon. Uh, welcome. My name is Josh Felpern. I am the VP of Sales here at Alps Controls. And on behalf of all of us here at Alps Controls, thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to um, join us in the solutions webinar. Uh, today, we feel very lucky and fortunate to have Belimo uh, presenting their sensor portfolio, going through that. We've got their uh, product line manager, Eddie Kelly, and uh, the product specialist, Brett Kavanaugh, who will be presenting uh, their and going through their portfolio today. Um, but before we get started, just a couple housekeeping items. Uh, as questions pop up, they're going to be going through a lot of material today. There's a lot of great things happening at Belimo um, in this, in as far as sensors go. Um, so there are going to be questions that I'm sure they come across your mind during the presentation. If you notice on the bottom right side of your screen, um, you can go ahead and put a, any of those questions in uh, there, and we'll keep track of them. And when we get to the Q and A part of the uh, of the webinar, um, we'll make sure we answer all the questions. And for those that are, you know, responding and putting in questions, and those that are attending and stay for the entire um, event, Belimo has been very generous, and we've got a bunch of great raffle items that we will be raffling off um, after the webinar. So please stay in uh, involved and engaged uh, throughout the whole webinar and. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Eddie Kelly to uh, share his screen and uh, kick things off. Eddie? All right. Thank you, Josh. Awesome introduction. Um, sharing my screen now, so I won't take any time on the uh, any additional time to introduce ourselves. Again, we can't do better than Josh did. So thank you guys for the invitation. And to everyone online, thank you for your time today. We, we very much look forward to answering any and all questions that you guys send our way. So um, without further ado, let's just kind of jump into this. I will spare you all the marketing discussion. Um, high level, I do want to speak to the three words on the screen, seamless, reliable, intuitive. In terms of seamless, um, so for those of you that don't know, Belimo has launched our core sensor duct pipe portfolio in 2017. In terms of seamless, we have all sorts of outputs available that, that mesh in and speak with most of the automation systems in our world today. So many outputs you know, on the passive versions, PT1000, 10K2, 10K3, and so on. Also a slew of analog outputs, BACnet, Modbus, and of course, Belimo's own MP bus. Jumping quickly to the reliability side. So Belimo is well known for our robustness, quality, reliability, especially in the actuator valve assortment. Um, by no means are sensors any different. Um, so five-year warranty across the board. We value our customers as true partners. So if you ever have any issues in the field, questions, troubleshooting, we are absolutely here to assist any of your needs. Um, so those three words, seamless, reliable, intuitive. Jumping quickly on the intuitive side here, guys. When we mean intuitive, you know, how do you take a simple, you know, passive, maybe low cost temperature sensor and, and add value without adding too much cost? What you're going to see throughout this presentation, we have many features um, really in the realm of ease of installation, ease of commissioning, you know, some maintenance free devices, self calibrating, auto calibration and so on. And we will start to emphasize kind of these features moving forward um, as we break out the, the product lines. So you got the marketing spiel, maybe halfway saw it, halfway didn't, probably better for you guys on that front anyway. All right, so quickly here, guys, a very high level slide just showing six kind of main categories of sensors that we do offer here in Belimo. Um, of course, we offer temperature sensors, many different form factors, um, you know, strap on, single point, immersion, yeah, averaging, and so on. Uh, we also offer a slew of humidity sensors. One thing to note with our humidity sensors, every humidity sensor comes standard with a temperature output as well. And there's a few different form factors. Um, just note, I have a slide on each of these product families, so I'll go a bit into detail you know, beyond just this title slide. We also offer air quality sensors. So when we, when we think air quality, we're thinking CO2 um, and VOC, you know, demand control ventilation, bring fresh air in as CO2, as CO2 level rise you know that's a big play on energy efficiency as well in, in all of our applications we offer pressure sensors as well both for air and for liquid um, also pressure switches you know for fans fans uh, fan speed um, you know filter monitoring things like this um, if you guys are familiar with our energy valve epiv and so on 
Those devices are performance devices that also include a flow sensor built in, again, all about energy efficiency. So in our sensors realm, we do offer standalone flow sensors and BTU energy meters also um, as standalone devices outside of the energy valve EPIV type of portfolio. Um, one of our newer offerings also is our room sensor assortment. So there is a few more detailed slides on the room sensors. Um, we offer a slew of room sensors, temperature, humidity, CO2, with and without display, all NFC configurable. Those of you, or man, many of you may know, um, December of 2020, we acquired a company called Opera Detectors based out of Montreal, Canada. Um, so we've always wanted to get into kind of the niche gas monitoring market. You know, there's a, a couple ways of getting into a market, you know, from, from ground zero. Um, you could develop a product from scratch. Or you could jump in, of course, and, and acquire a company that has a strong market presence. And that's exactly what we did. So there's some pretty real, some pretty good features in terms of installation, um, commissioning, networking, and so on, which Brett will go into details towards the end of this presentation. Um, replacement sensing elements, hot swappable. These are all UL 2075. There's a lot of good stuff with this product portfolio. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to jump in here quickly to focus more so on the duct pipe offering. And as mentioned before, I will kick over to Brett with the room sensor category as well as the gas monitoring category. All right. So with our sensors, the next three slides are going to give you all a very overview of the, just the standard features um, that are associated with all of our sensors. So one thing you'll notice right away, and if, if you're familiar with our sensors, you'll this, this is kind of... Um, We'll, we'll ring some bells here. So again, ease of installation. The cap itself, so you can remove the cover, of course, to, to wire and terminate and so on. It's a snap-on, snap-off cover. There's no screws needed there. Um, all accessories that are needed to fully install our sensors come with the sensors themselves. So that includes mounting plates. Um, we are a Swiss company by nature, so we do include a half-inch NPT conduit fitting or conduit adapter per se with every one of our sensors. Um, another example of accessories, I mean, if you guys were to purchase or, or you know get one of our pressure sensors, for example, they come with the tubes, they come with the pedo pickups and so on. So again, emphasis, everything needed to install our sensors comes with the package. That also includes the mounting clips, the little circle clips um, that's used with the averaging, averaging temperature sensors as well. We also have BACnet and Modbus across our sensor range. Um, I believe today we, we don't have Modbus on the gas monitor portfolio specifically, but without a doubt in the background, we are working on that. Um, so as mentioned before, the, these are the common features. What you'll notice is all of our duct pipe core sensors, they all have the same look, feel kind of form factor. So the idea is if you install one of these, you're familiar with the product um, and you could easily install and get familiar with the other families of products as well. They all have the same form factor, the same, the same types of mounting plates and so on. And again, as mentioned, we know conduit is a requirement here in the Americas. So every one of our sensors, rest assured, comes with a half inch conduit fitting as well. Um, jumping a bit more into the specifics of the sensor itself. Okay, so again, I mentioned ease of installation, ease of commissioning. That also includes part selection, part number selection, and so on. So we will go into some field selectable measuring ranges and why that makes a big difference in, in part number selection and so on. On top of that, every one of our orange sensor housings are standard NEMA 4X IP65. And, you know, we standardize on that for, for many reasons. Of course, robustness for us is very important. Also, part number Number selection, reducing the overall variance that we have to manage internally. Um, and COVID was just a perfect example of this. I mean, we didn't have a huge amount of part numbers to manage, and we kept product in stock to help our customers out in, in times of need like this. Um, another cool feature of our sensors, they all come with spring-loaded removable terminal blocks. So in terms of ease of installation and commissioning, through the commissioning sequence, you have to power the device on and off. So instead of having to, to loosen up one of the turndown terminal styles and pull the wire and put it back in the power wire all you have to do is just simply slide the whole terminal block off the pins then your you know powers off and then when you're ready to power on just slide this guy right back on and installation commissioning happens really quickly with with that quick um, quick little feature there 
All right, guys. So as mentioned, um, I do have a slide on each of the product families, and then Brett will go a bit into details on the room sensor portfolio and the gas monitors. So first, I want to quickly talk about the temperature sensors. Um, so I mentioned seamless before. In our temperature range, we have many outputs, 10K2, 10K3, all the major passives we, we have. Um, of course, also on the analogs, you know, 0 to 5, 0 to 10, uh, the room sensors, you can go 2 to 10 as well, right to an actuator, um, 4 to 20 milliamp on the current side as well. So a, a slew of outputs here available. You see that middle line field selectable measuring ranges. So what this means is one part number, you could potentially install in eight different types of zones in one facility. So I could say we have our temperature sensors here in the conference room. We use the exact same temperature sensors down in our kitchen in the freezer area. They just switch the measuring range over, of course, specifically for that zone. So again, ease of installation in, in our world is, is also tantamount to part number selection, you know, especially for stocking backups and spares and so on. Um, one thing to note, so the images you guys are looking at, so we've got this kind of green capillary here. That's one of our averaging temperature sensors. Okay, so typically averaging sensors go cross-sectionally across a duct because you want the full picture of the temperature um, within the entire duct space. The larger the duct gets, you have air stratification. So hot air rises, of course, cold air drops. The cool thing with Belimo's green capillary here, it's one continuous sensing element. So anywhere where this green capillary is, is one continuous sensing element. It's measuring a true, we call it a true average, anywhere where it's installed in the duct itself. And again, these do come with the, with the little black um, clips as well for, for installation. So our averaging sensors are available in 10 feet, 20 feet, and we just recently launched, launched the 50 foot versions all of them are in stock, ready to ship today. All right, guys, so jumping over to the humidity side. So I mentioned this before, every one of our humidity sensors comes standard with a temperature output. Um, across the board, including our room sensors here on the wall, they're all plus or minus 2%. Um, relative humidity accuracy. One of Bolimo's kind of differentiators here in the market, okay, so there's four types of humidity that that is kind of important to us. We all know relative humidity. Um, there's also absolute humidity, enthalpy, and most importantly today is dew point. So ASHRAE 62.1 is now strongly promoting dew point. Um, dew point is heavily used in pharma, hospitals, grow farms, and so on. So with all of our Belimo humidity sensors, you just flip a dip switch and it outputs dew point versus relative humidity. Um, and that's the same within our room sensors as well. So I mentioned the temperature measurement ranges as well. So with our humidity sensor specifically, we also have the onboard temperature sensors. And within that temperature sensor, there's four field selectable measurement ranges as well. Again, the idea is part number reduction, you know, making backups, spares, and purchasing products much easier on your end. All right. So jumping over here to air quality. So again, when we think air quality, we think CO2, we think VOC, you know, demand control ventilation, bringing fresh air in only as needed, being as energy efficient as possible. So using CO2 sensors and VOC sensors, the more accurate you are, you know, the, the better your DCV process can be. Couple of notes here. So you'll see dual channel self calibration. There's kind of two, let's just say background algorithms that combat drift in real time. So when sensors get installed into an application and air starts to run through a sensor, it gets dirty. As the sensor gets more dirty over time, it starts to drift away from its, you know, manufactured stated accuracy and so on. ABC Logic has been around for a long time. We've now standardized on dual channel and DIR. In the field, you'll, you'll, you know, if you look at competitors' offerings and so on, a lot of them will have both options. One option is typically called semi-occupancy or semi-occupied, and the other product is for, for you know, full 100% occupancy. Um, so the full you know, full occupancy technology is this NDIR technology. Really long story short, we have an infrared sensing element within our device itself. It sends out an infrared beam and is received by a filter. Depending on the amount of CO2 in the air, that beam kind of loses strength. So the loss of that strength tells us the amount of CO2 in real time. It then kicks over immediately to another filter. 
The second filter measures specifically how dirty the sensor is. So that second filter gives you a real time um, data set or data point on how dirty the sensor is. It's a real time uh, the, throughout the entire lifetime of the sensor real in real time combats drift. So this thing happens, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of times a day. These are really, really useful in critical applications, hospitals, pharma, and so on. Really fully occupied scenarios where there's always co constant occupancy and the CO2 levels really not never drop down to an atmospheric level. These this is the kind of technology that that will bring the most benefit to those applications. The third bullet here, um, so we have a, a slew of different variants within this category, temp humidity CO2, temp CO2, you know, you could sprinkle in VOCs with a bunch of these as well. Um, one thing that I like to note here, we have a BACnet version in Modbus as well of, of our combo air quality sensor. Um, I guess years ago, we would say this is like the Cadillac of our portfolio. I think now in 2024, maybe the Ferrari or the McLaren. Um, but what's nice about this, within one device, if you, if you opt in for the BACnet version, you get all of these data points with one device. That includes all four types of humidity as well. So potentially seven or eight pieces of data with one device, you know, sending info back to your, your BMS system there. Jumping over here to pressure, guys. Um, so the image on the right is one of our pressure transducers, transmitters. So these are available in um, BACnet and Modbus, of course, analog as well. Um, as we know, I mean, most of the offerings out in the field, you've got a zeroing feature where you would pop the cap open and you push a button to zero it out during the calibration sequence. Um, so with critical applications, we're seeing these have to get calibrated roughly once a year, maybe twice, twice a year. In the more non-critical applications, these get calibrated like once every two years and so on. Here at Belimo, again, ease of installation, commissioning, this also includes kind of maintenance-free features similar to the CO2 device that's constantly combating drift. In the pressure range, we have what we call true auto zero. So if you opt in for the true auto zero version, every 10 minutes from the entirety of the sensor's life, every 10 minutes, it automatically zeroes itself out automatically. So you don't have to physically go to the sensor and hit the button for it to do it. It does it by itself every 10 minutes. We also offer pressure switches, which is this kind of clamshell device looking picture there on the bottom. These are heavily, heavily used for filter monitoring. So basically, as we know, as a filter gets dirtier, you'll have a buildup of pressure upstream. Depending on that DP level, it'll basically flip its switch and tell your 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 BMS system when it's time to change change the filter. Um, sometimes we see these run across fans as well. If there's an issue with a fan, you'll have either a drop or an increase in pressure. All of this just alerts the BMS and it says, "Hey, something's going on. Let's go out and check check the device out, and see what's actually happening." All right. So again, in light of you know installation commissioning ease, um, Belimo has a, a world of of um, apps, you know, dongles, NFC uh, configuration, and so on. Within our duct and pipe assortment specifically, we have what we call a duct assistant app. So we can provide you guys with a Bluetooth dongle. It kind of shows on the image on the left, plugs into a micro USB port on the device itself, and then it'll speak via Bluetooth to your smartphone. And that brings additional programming um, commissioning capabilities to your, your handheld device. There's things like changing the display around. You could actually change the CO2 display to have colors, like a traffic light function, quick visual indicator of the CO2 levels just based on the color of the LCD itself. Um, all of this information is available online with all of our sensors. So if you need any additional information, just feel free to jump on our website or through Alps or however you guys want to reach out to us, we could help. Um, and this flyer and so on, they're all available on our website with much more detail than, than I'm speaking to now. All right, a couple more slides from you guys. Um, so in the pressure assortment, we do have liquid pressure sensors. So in the top right is differential pressure. Um, in the liquid side, also low low pressure steam up to 15 PSI. Um, and then the picture on the bottom right there is more of a static or a gauge pressure sensor. These are used all over the place in terms of hydronic system solutions and so on. Those don't look very belimoized. And that's because we recently launched a more Belimoized version of these. So we've had those first sensors since like 2017, and they're used a lot. Um, we now, as, oh man, I want to say we launched these in December or November of last year, so these are fresh. The image on the top right here is differential pressure for liquid as well. You'll see they come with remote probes, so they're much easier to install. 
Um, we do offer three-way manifolds with these as an accessory as well, if needed. Um, you'll notice with that guy on the top, it comes with an LCD display. There's a zeroing button, or you can remote in and, and zero it out from the BMS system. We've recently launched the picture on the bottom. So it's the same version of the sensor up top, but it comes with flex uh, conduit um, armored cables as well for those, those needs. This image on the right is a leak detection switch, leak detection relay. So this is also a new offering for us. Um, this is available with one output right now, single relay. We are launching a double relay leak detector uh, within two months. So that is gonna be coming before we know it. We're looking forward to that one as well. Jumping to flow sensors here, guys. Again, so if you're familiar with EPIV, energy valve, and so on, those are a performance device from Belimo that include our flow sensor as a component. So the big kind of claim to fame with Belimo flow sensors is glycol compensation. Um, in real time, it measures the glycol in the system, and it it spits out a true accurate flow reading. Blimo owns this patent. Um, we won all sorts of awards on this. Again, if you guys want any additional information, feel free to reach out, ask questions and so on. Um, and we could chat on this stuff towards the end of this call. All right, so before I kick over to Brett for the room sensors, one thing I wanted to point out here in, in, in my eyes, so we've got the ASHRAE um, Innovation Award last year on these new room sensors. In my eyes, there's three kind of main reasons for this. Firstly, powerless NFC. So these are all configured through NFC. Brett will give you the details of that. What's nice about the powerless NFC is you could have all of the room sensors in front of you in their original box, their original packaging sealed, um, and you can configure them in front of you before they get into your technician's hands. So you can connect through NFC with one sensor, you could copy the settings and paste, 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 paste to all the other sensors on the table in front of you or the desk. And that way your technicians can go out and, and install these guys mechanically, electronically, and not have to worry about the setup and the apps and so on. We also have temperature compensation which we basically have an onboard temperature sensor um, and we measure the internal self heat of the sensor and cut it and dynamically adjust the output temperature to the BMS. So it's a more true um, temperature reading versus, you know, ha having to read the temperature inside the device, which is not really important for our applications. The third kind of big thing in my eyes why we won this innovation award is dynamic pressure compensation. So we know CO2 is a gas, depending on altitude and elevation, density changes, it has an effect on response time and accuracy for CO2. We have an onboard pressure sensor within the device itself. So in real time, we're measuring the pressure and counteracting and offsetting our CO2 values to remain as accurate as possible. You could take one of these guys off the wall in Miami, installed in Denver, Colorado, and you still have tried and true accurate CO2 readings. So with that being said, I'm going to kick over to Brett here. Brett's going to come into the screen. Thank you guys for the discussion and the time today, and we'll chat with your question and answer session towards the end. All right. So my name is Brett Kavanaugh. I'm a product specialist for sensors, meters, gas monitors, now focusing just on gas monitors. Um, but I'm gonna go over room sensors and, and gas monitors. So Belimo offers room sensors for air quality monitoring. So just as a side note, room sensors are different from thermostats because they don't control things directly. So they measure the air quality. They'll send that information back to a controller or a BMS. And then that controller will do something. So for example, uh, turn on the heating, air conditioning, a fan, et cetera. So Belimo offers passive uh, room sensors. So the passive ones measure temperature. So we have different outputs, PT100, PT1000, Nickel1000, NTC 10K2, 10K3, and 20K. Um, they have a manual override button to wake up this system, and they've got an optional um, set point dial. Then we have... Um, active room sensors, so they measure temperature, relative, relative humidity, dew point, and CO2 concentration. Um, they have analog outputs, so 0 to 5, 0 to 10, or 2 to 10 volts, or uh, communication, so back in the MSCP, Modbus RTU, or um, Belimos proprietary MP bus. So the cool thing about these room sensors are that all active room sensors are um, configurable through your phone by NFC. All right, so what do we mean by configurable? So one thing you can cust totally customize the display. So in this example here, this is a Belimo active room sensor. It's showing um, the room temperature, the relative humidity and CO2 concentration, 
with a um, LED indicator for CO2 levels. It's got temperature set point, um, ventilation speed or uh, ventilation, and then a power button to deactivate the display. In addition to that, through your phone, through NFC, you can also view live data, set your temperature set point uh, in range, change units and analog outputs and set offsets. So we offer, we also offer room sensors without a display. Same features apply to the to ver versions with a display. Um, but in addition, we offer a second app called the Blimo Display app, which allows um, an authorized user to change the temperature set point only. So you see this is in German, it, it's in English too. All right, so lastly, uh, Blimo offers gas monitors for air quality and leak detection monitoring. So just in general, gas monitors are important because they protect people and living things from gases that are present that you might not know they're there. They're invisible, you can't smell them, you can't see them. So, um, so basically now we're talking about, hey, what's so unique about, about Blimo gas monitors? First, each device can monitor up to two different gases um, and the sensor modules, which is the, the part in the gas monitor that physically senses the gas are hot swappable um, and uh, factory calibrated. So when you replace them, you don't need to, to disconnect power from the device and they're factory calibrated. So you don't need to recalibrate them after you install. Second, they have analog outputs and relays that allow for direct control. And third, they have CAN bus and BACnet MSTP for communication that allows them to be used as a standalone system or integrated into a BMS. Looking at the inside of the product, it's got an EMA2 IP44 rated enclosure with a wire, uh, wire guard, uh, a drip seal, and a drain at the bottom to protect electronics from condensation. It's got five conduit knockouts and over 77 different programmable settings that allow you to uh, program these gas monitors to meet your sequence of operations. As we mentioned before, they allow for direct control through analog outputs and relays. Um, and regardless of the application or the gases being monitored, uh, we offer three different models. So three different versions of this PCB, this green board. So this is an A model that has CAN bus and back net for communication, one relay and two analog outputs for direct control. We have a B model that offers CAN bus and back net for communication, two relays for direct control. And we have a C model that just has CAN bus. All right, so the question after that is, why do we offer three different models and why do we offer one model specifically that just has CAN bus and nothing else? So this is an example. So let's say you have a one story enclosed parking garage. You have an intake fan to bring in fresh air and an exhaust fan to exhaust the bad air. And you follow the Belimo guidelines and you have four gas monitors to correctly monitor the space. And all gas monitors are wired daisy chain for up to 32 devices. In this application, you have two fans, both on off, so you only need two relays. You can either do this one of two ways. You can have one B that has two relays, the rest Cs, or two Bs um, in, the, in the middle two Cs. So we decided to use two Bs because we figured it might be more cost effective for wiring. So what will happen here is if any of the gas monitors detect the gas, they'll send a signal to the dash B models that are physically connected to the fans to turn them on. And we say this will save money um, because two things, you, you only need to buy the analog outputs and relays that you're using for your system. And then second, you don't need to purchase an additional designated uh, control controller um, because the gas monitors are the, the devices physically controlling the external equipment. So in this case, two, two exhaust fans. All right, so this next slide is what we offer and what we will offer. So we have four different applications of Blimo gas monitors. 
First application is vehicle emissions. So this is monitoring carbon monoxide and nitrogen dioxide. Um, these can be used pretty much anywhere where combustion is present. Next, we have indoor air quality. So this is carbon dioxide, so what we exhale. We have combustible and toxic gases, which monitor ammonia, methane or natural gas, propane, hydrogen, hydrogen sulfide, chlorine, oxygen leak, and oxygen depletion. And then we have refrigerant gas leak detection that monitors a variety of selectable refrigerants. So in addition to the four applications of gas monitors, we also have uh, accessories too. So we have communication modules and relay units that allow for direct control from central locations. So um, the gas monitors physically control things directly through analog outputs and relays. But if you'd like uh, to have something in a location that it's maybe more easily serviceable, these are where communication relay communication units and relay units can be used. Like we mentioned before, we have sensor modules that are um, factory calibrated and hot swappable. So when you replace them, you don't need to disconnect the unit from power and they're already pre-calibrated. We have a high-low kit. So this is essentially each gas monitor can monitor up to two different gases. If you're monitoring two gases with different densities, all this is is, a, is an external shell that allows you to place one of the sensors in a remote location up to seven feet away. We have external horn and strobe alarms um, that in addition to the, the horn and strobe alarms on the device, on the gas monitors themselves, these ones are louder, they're brighter if you need something like that. We offer a calibration kit for, the, for annually calibrating sensor modules, a replacement kit um, if the hose or the cap breaks, security screws, transformers for power, and a splash-proof and duct mount enclosure. And then lastly, currently in the US, we've released vehicle emissions, so CO, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, CONO2, and indoor air quality, carbon dioxide, or CO2. Um, by the end of this year, by January 1st of 2025, our plan is to release combustible and toxic gases and refrigerant gas leak detection to the US. Thank you. Beautiful. We've got a bunch of questions uh, in the queue there. And so uh, thanks for everybody for uh, hanging on and uh, sticking with us. We'll get out to all your questions right now. Um, Jack Asheruni wants to know, what is the NEMA rating on the sensor enclosure? So our duct sensors, NEMA 4X IP65, um, the gas monitor specifically is NEMA 2. Cody Tadaro wants to know, does Belimo offer a combo sensor wall-mounted NEMA 4 rated for building temp and humidity monitoring? At the moment, no. Um, all of our combo wall-mount units are, are more so geared towards the indoor uh, commercial type environment, you know, conference rooms and so on. Those, those do not specifically have a NEMA rating. Russell Harris wants to know, does the dynamic temperature reading for the room space sensors adjust the value on the LCD screen in addition to the reading on the BAS system? Yep, so any of the info you're seeing on the screen is gonna be the same as the info sent to the BMS system. That is after the, the dynamic temperature compensation takes place. So any of the values you're reading will in, in fact include the temperature compensation. Uh, George Huber would like to know, what are the options for the set point knob, two to 10 resistive, et cetera? So yeah, so on the room sensor side, the set point knob is a resistive output. So if you've noticed, we just have dots that get bigger over, you know, uh, over the range. And that's because you could use it for fan speed and so on. So it's, it's basically just a range of resistance output. And of course we could provide that range to you guys based on the part number, it kind of a changes based on which sensing element you're looking for, but it's a resistive output in general. We have a question from uh, Amin Haroon. He wants to know, are there specific sensor ranges for different gases offered for the gas monitors? For example, zero to 100 uh, ppm NH3 or something like that. Are yeah, there sorry. multiple, or sorry, I almost done. <laughs> it's a long question. Are there multiple sensor ranges for a selected gas? Um, all right, so for every single gas, that we offer for our gas monitors, they have uh, or, uh, 
gas range. So for CO, it would be 0 to 250 ppm, NO2, 0 to 10. And then uh, CO2, we have three different ones, 0 to 2,000, 5,000, and 10,000. And it goes on for the combustibles and refrigerant. So what we're doing is we have an operations manual that's online that we're adding the ranges to so uh, people can easily see them. And then another thing to add to that. So every gas monitor has three different alarm levels that we set them to um, certain PPM levels by default that are totally customizable to whatever PPM uh, level you'd like them to be. So yeah, every single sensor has, has a different range and uh, that will be available in the operations manual very soon. Cody Tadaro is back with a follow-up question. Wants to know, what is the lifespan for the gas monitor sensors? All right, so for the gas monitor, the so you have the gas monitor, that's the physical device itself, and then you have the sensor modules that sit inside the gas monitor. The gas monitor can last a long time. The sensor modules are what you need to calibrate annually and check to see how much life they have left. So we're also adding in the operations manual a section where we say, hey, What's the end of life and what's the rec what's the the recommended lifespan or what we've seen in the past of how long these sensor modules last. So the lifespan is, uh, for example, for CO, we maybe would be, be between five and eight years, as long as the application is pretty normal and you calibrate annually. Um, and then the end of life is saying, hey, if you install these gas monitors in a place and totally forget about them, after a certain amount of time, these gas monitors will go into alarm because um, they need to warn somebody that that they're not doing what they should because they've never been calibrated. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're also, guys, um, rolling out a new update to the gas monitors over the next couple of weeks, and there will be end-of-life reminders on the device itself. So we can measure the gain inside when we go through the calibration sequence. And if it does start to come towards the end of the life and the gain starts to get to a certain threshold, the monitors themselves will start to ping on the display, hey, get ready for calibration, kind of like a calibration reminder, end-of-life reminder. Yeah, so you'll know when you calibrate the gas monitors, um, with the gas bottles in the, the calibration kit, you'll be able to kind of see how much life is left in the sensor modules. And it depends based on the application, if it's dirty, if it's sensing gas all the time. Um, so yeah, it depends. Bruce Natamoto wants to know, what is the accuracy of your temp sensors? Um, that's a good question. I know for our room sensors, we're at plus minus 0 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit on the on the active side. On the passive side, I mean, all of this stuff is in our data sheets for sure. On the passive side, it depends on the element um, that you're looking at, 10K2, 10K3, and so on. But in terms of passive, it's very industry standard. Um, in the active side, it's plus minus 0 0.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, we have an, an, an anonymous uh, watcher wants to know, is NFC patented here in the U.S.? Um, I think overarching answer to that one is no. Um, I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction, but I know we do have patents and IP all around our room sensors. Um, so I'm sure you can kind of go down the weeds in, in terms of what specifically we're protecting us or protecting our, our IP on. But um, I get the, the general answer is yes. And I think just NFC overall, other competitors and companies use NFC. We don't own just NFC technology in general. Victor Wagner asks, are, there, uh, are the garage gas monitors LADBS accepted? LADBS accepted. I think we'd have to get back to you on that. If if LA means Los Angeles, we've been going back and forth a lot with the LA County requirements. Not sure if LA BDS is that. We could definitely follow up with our regulation team and reach out on that on that specific answer. Uh, Kevin Deachen wants to know: Do you have a conduit option for the wet differential pressure sensors? Can I whip and pull the wire between transu transducer and pressure taps? Um, if I'm hearing correctly, we definitely provide conduit fittings for sure, NPT half-inch fittings with those sensors, uh, absolutely. And they're all UL. There's like a UL pool test and so on. So we have kind of like a cable grommet. When you tighten this guy down, it, it, it crimps down around the sensor itself to stop the pull out. That is a pretty hard UL requirement as well. Also got the arm. Okay. Armored cable. Yep. It's too. The armored cable versions as well. Yep. Robert Lee wants to know why do the temperature sensors have selectable ranges as opposed to the typical single large range? 
Is there a specific use case for this type of design? Yeah, so overall, our idea is to reduce variance. So a lot of times you'll see, you know, different part numbers for different ranges. The reason why ours are selectable is because depending on how big your measurement range is, that kind of has a, a an importance in terms of accuracy and resolution when you have like an active output. So our idea of including selectable measuring ranges means that you could take one part number and use it in multiple zones just by adjusting that measurement range based on the application requirements. Uh, do you have wireless sensor offering? If yes, what kind of, uh, what type of wireless? Yeah, so at the moment, we don't have a wireless offering. Um, we are working towards something in the future, uh, but at the moment, no, we, we don't have a, a, a clear wireless solution. That's a good question. Okay, looks like we're uh, nearing the end of uh, the questions in our queue. We have just a few of these left. Um, uh, Russell Harris is back again. Let's see. Have you noticed any reading issues with the splash proof enclosure on a gas monitor? Yeah, so with a gas monitor, it has the holes to, to read or to, they work by diffusion. So it's just how long the gas takes to get to the gas monitor. The more things you add in front of that, the longer it takes. So we've tested the splash proof enclosure. Um, we've actually drilled more holes into it to make it, um, make the amount of time that it takes for the gas to get to the monitor, not a super long amount of time. In terms of how much longer it adds, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but yeah, we have taken that mm -hmm. into account too. Yeah, we've recently redesigned that enclosure to, to basically speed up the response time exactly for that reason. So that's a great question as well. Uh, why does Belimo offer three different apps? The assistant app, the duck sensor assistant app, and the display app. It's another phenomenal question that we get all the time. So as mentioned, we launched Belimo sensors in 2017. We have been coming out with a slew of sensors all, all throughout the years. And the, the difficulty in our world is when we develop these new sensors and we say, hey, it'd be nice to have this new app. You know, we develop a new sensor and then we might not be able to use the Belimo assistant app for that specific device. So we have to develop a new app. Rest assured, moving forward, um, we are going to have what we call one digital experience. There will be one app across the board used for all of our sensors, meters, also used for all of our actuators and valves. It's kind of going to it's going to be kind of like a, a major upgrade to the Belimo assistant app that we have today. So that will be fixed in the near future for sure. OK, looks like uh, just a, a couple more here. Uh, do Belimo gas monitors have adjustable analog output signals? Yes, they do. Yeah. By default, it's um, two to 10 or four to 20 milliamps. So if you open up the cover on a gas monitor, you look at the inside, there's a little jumper like we have in the other temperature sensors, the passive ones that you just, or maybe some active ones mm -hmm. too, that you um, stick on uh, whether you want it four to 20 or two to 10. There's also, if you have a multimeter, um, you can take your multimeter and stick it on the analog output um, and adjust it to whatever whatever output you're looking for. So zero to 10, one to five, whatever. Um, and then the analog outputs are also configurable. So by default, for example, say you have two to 10, by default, two volts is zero PPM, 10 volts for CO is 250 PPM, but you can customize it to make it work how you'd like it to. Mm -hmm. All that's done through the programmable settings in the gas monitor itself. Yeah, there, there's a few pre-programmed control algorithms, too, when you're running an analog output to a VFD, for example, you know, slowly ramping that VFD up until the CO levels come down. So, again, a, a play on energy efficiency there as well. Okay, it looks like maybe we just have one more question sitting here in the queue. Uh, does Belimo offer NIST calibration certificates? It's a good question. Um, so at the moment, as in today, we cannot offer NIST traceable certs, but rest assured, we will be able to provide NIST certs on all of our products in the very, very near future. It's right around the corner. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thank you, hey, guys. Brad. Thank you guys so much. I know I got a ton out of it. I'm sure the attendees did too. And, uh, you know, for everybody that attended, if you have questions uh, regarding any of the products you saw today, please reach out to your sales uh, contact at Alps Controls, and we'll be happy to facilitate uh, with the help from Brett and uh, um, Eddie on uh, getting back to you. So, I hope you, everybody has a great rest of the day. Eddie and Brett, thank you again. Thank you. Take Good care. Good, guys. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it.